So today we are going to start looking at a another grand generalization from school geometry or or three dimensional geometry. This is inner product spaces or Hilbert spaces. As I said, the nice property of three dimensional world or the the geometry that we study, Euclidean geometry that we study, is uh, orthogonality between two vectors. If you have uh, if you have perpendicular vectors, we can define models very conveniently. We can define vectors very conveniently. So there are many many advantages of Pythagoras theorem, and we would like it to hold in a general space, which consists of functions, which consists of polynomials, and so on. So we have to we have to come up with new uh, new structure on a vector space which is equivalent to what you have available in three dimensions and then try to see to it that the properties that that are important in three dimensions or uh, in, in school geometry are also preserved in these uh, newly defined vector spaces. So now we impose one more structure, see we till now we started, we started by uh, defining norms but just length or norm was not enough, it was helpful in defining, uh, generalizing the ideas of convergence, convergence to a limit and so on, but we need something more, we need angles. So remember two things, what I, what I want to generalize, I want to generalize uh, the so called dot product, if my x is nothing but r3, then if I am given any two vectors x and y that belong to x, then what I do is I I construct unit vector as x by 2 norm of x and y cap which is also unit vector uh, y by 2 norm of y. So this is this is 2 norm x2 norm is x transpose x raised to half okay we construct two vectors which are unit vectors in direction of x and y and then if i want to find out angle between x and y i have to take a dot product between <coughs> so a fundamental result that we have is cos theta cos theta is equal to x cap transpose y cap. A fundamental result that I have is x cap transpose y cap is equal to cos theta angle between them. I want I want this particular idea to be generalized in uh, in a vector space. Now what we know what we know from trigonometry is that cos theta is cos theta is always bounded between plus and minus 1 okay so another way of stating this this inequ this equality is to say that mod cos theta is less than or equal to 1 or or this also means that in three dimensions x divided by norm x this is another way this is another way of writing the same inequality cos theta is always less than 1. So uh, x transpose, so I can see this is a this is a scalar and this is also a scalar right. So I can write this as mod of x transpose y is always less than or equal to right and then what was what was important property of uh, that we said we, we want to have is orthogonality. So when x is perpendicular to y, okay, when x is perpendicular to y, x transpose y is equal to 0, this was very, very important for us. This was very, very important for us. We, we, uh, extensively used orthogonality, we use orthogonal basis for example the most well known orthogonal basis is i, j, k uh, 
you know unit vectors perpendicular along the coordinate direction. So, orthogonality is a very very important property we want it ok. So, I want to now come up with generalization of these results in a in a vector space that is that is my uh, that is my aim. So, I am going to define a new entity called inner product I am given a vector space x together with together with a function called inner product So, I am given a vector space, I am given a vector, uh, I am given a vector space x and a function which is defined on x cross x, ok, x cross x to the field f. So, given x y that belong to x, I am going to define inner product x inner product y, this is the notation that we are going to use throughout the course, x inner product y. is defined from x cross x to. So, what are the axioms that govern this definition? There are four axioms, the certain properties which are generic to inner product in three dimensions which I want to now generalize and uh, come up with uh, a generalized definition which is which will in a special case would be this dot product which you know in three dimensions. So, so my first axiom is right. Well, I I may in in when I'm working with uh, vector spaces. In many situations, I have to work with complex valued functions or complex complex valued vectors. So, uh, what this says is that if I change the order, if I take inner product of x with y, okay, uh, then uh, and if I change the order, what I get is the complex conjugate. Okay, so typically the field that we are going to work with is R or C. set of complex numbers. So, well if you are working with real valued, if you are working with real valued vectors or real valued functions, then this is very obvious. If I change the order, if I make uh, x transpose or y or y transpose x, I am going to get the same value, ok. With complex numbers, you get a complex conjugate that is that is important. The second property I want the inner product to uh, to observe is that if I am given any three vectors, any x, y and z that belong to x, So, this this inner product that we define should distribute should distribute over vector addition. So, if I take x plus y and take inner product with z then that is same as adding these two inner products ok, x with z and y with z ok. That is the second important property of a function to qualify as a inner product ok. 
So what is the third important property? The third important property is that if I take a scalar lambda, if I take a scalar lambda and multiply it with x, then this is same as lambda bar this is same as but the way it happens with the second element and the first element is different in the inner product well if you are working with real numbers these both results are same because lambda bar is equal to lambda okay so if you are working with complex numbers you need to separate these two equalities. So if I take the first vector multiplied by lambda, then it is same thing as multiplying inner product of x and y with lambda bar, that is co complex conjugate of lambda. Okay, and if I take the second vector multiplied by, in, that is y, if I take and multiply by lambda, then it is same as okay lambda times. So this is this is another uh, essential property, or this is an axiom that defines a function to be inner product. I want to maintain this because we have to generalize a few things, so I want to draw parallels. So uh, let this be there for some time. Uh, what is the last axiom? So the last axiom is, or the fourth axiom is, if I take inner product with, okay, let us let's look at here, let us look at this property. If I take inner product of a vector x with itself, what do I get? I get 2 norm in 3, in three dimensions. What is 2 norm? Uh, 2 norm is if I if x1, x2, x3 are 3 components, x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square whole to the power half. Okay. So that is, so this particular property is quite important. Uh, in light of generalizing this. So this should always be greater than or equal to 0 and x and the inner product of x with itself should be 0 only if x is 0. This is also very, very important here, right, in 3 dimensions. Uh, only inner product of x will be equal to 0, uh, x transpose x will be uh, 0 only if it is origin. The same property is being generalized here. Okay. In fact, this is what helps us in uh, defining a norm which is tied up with an inner product. Okay. A norm which is tied up with an inner product. A norm which is tied up with an inner product plays very, very important role in numeric analysis because this is a norm which comes up, uh, which comes with a definition of angle. Okay, that is that is why it, that is why two norm is something which is very very often used in applied mathematics. Okay. Okay. So now now let's start looking at uh, can we define there in three dimensions? We defined a norm using inner product. Can I do it here in a general vector space? Okay. So I said any function that obeys these four axioms qualifies to be an inner product, qualifies to be an inner product. So it is not necessary that, uh, it is not necessary uh, that we have to, uh, you know, uh, we have only one particular way of defining inner product. We have a generic way of uh, coming up with a definition of inner product that is suitable to our application, okay. Uh, what I mean by this will become clear as we go along. Okay, uh, so let me uh, let me define uh, some examples of inner products, which are even on R three. I will show you that there are different ways of defining inner products on, on three dimensions. But before that, let me uh, just uh, state what is a Hilbert space. Okay, some time back in the last lecture, we uh, you heard about Banach spaces. What are Banach spaces? Complete nonlinear spaces. So, what happens in complete spaces? Every Cauchy sequence is convergent in the space, right? So, Hilbert space uh, 
a complete inner product space a complete inner product space is called as a hilbert space it's uh, this is this name is given after a great mathematician hilbert who uh, laid foundations of function functional analysis okay so now some examples of inner products my first example is to show that there is no unique way of defining in a product in three dimensions also okay let me take my x as r3 okay now well when you say r3 the field is r i am not going to write it every time uh, just to keep the things uh, simple i am going to define a inner product on this now which is different from what we have done earlier you know just x transpose x okay uh, I am given. Uh, so let W be a positive definite matrix. So now we define an inner product using this positive definite matrix W. So my inner product for any two vectors x, y that belong to R three. So I have this x and y belong to R three, and x in a product y. I am going to give a little subscript here W. Okay, is going to be defined as x transpose W y. A simplest example of W would be a diagonal matrix. Okay. see for example i can i can simplest example of w would be you know matrix which is 100 0.1 and 1000 0 okay now you might ask me why why do you want to define some funny matrix w and then call it as a inner product where is it useful let's say i am working with a reactor okay and my x x is a vector that consists of say uh temperature pressure and concentration fractional okay so this is this is in tens and twenties let's say degree centigrade temperature pressure let's say is uh you know defined in pascals mega pascals so it's in 10 to the power 5 something here uh you know x is in fractions okay if i use my old good old way of defining you know product or length i have trouble because you know fraction this this mole fraction is always going to be a small number square of it is going to be a smaller number okay so many times i need to work with scaled variables okay i need to work with scaled variables at such times it is useful to have a inner product definition which normalizes the unit differences between different variables okay so i am not just defining this w matrix just like that it there is a purpose behind this and there, there are many many situations where you you will hit into this kind of normalization uh business where you have to use a matrix w now let's let's see whether this particular inner product satisfies properties that are specified what is the first property just go back and look at your so first thing is first property is my first property is that x y should be y x bar but we are not working with complex numbers we are not working with complex numbers so since we are not working with complex numbers in this particular case it is if i interchange it should not matter right so this this i don't have to prove to you that x transpose wy is same as y transpose wx why why this is true is this always true 
I need one more property. I have missed out something here. Oh no, I just said it is a positive definite matrix. I need something more. No. Yes. So, I need this matrix W to be positive definite and also this W has to be symmetric. W is equal to W transpose. This, this should be symmetric, otherwise this does not hold. Okay, otherwise this doesn't hold. So this matrix being positive definite is not sufficient. It should be a symmetric positive definite matrix. Okay, then what will happen if I take x transpose w y transpose that is y transpose w transpose x, which is y transpose w x because w transpose is equal to w. Okay, so symmetry is very very important. Okay, symmetry is very very important. So I need a positive definite matrix and a symmetric matrix. Okay. What next? Lambda times x. What will happen? What is the next property? I think x plus y, the second property distribution is very obvious. You do not have to prove this. x plus y z is equal to x plus y transpose w z which is nothing but x z plus y z. I think this is just it just follows very simple. What is the third thing? If I multiply one of the vectors by a scalar inner product should get multiplied by now we do not have to do uh, mod here there is no uh, bar here we just we just have to take uh, the scalar out because we are working with real numbers. So the third property is very very obvious that is uh, lambda lambda times x y is lambda x transpose w y which is lambda x transpose w y ok. I do not take complex conjugate because we are working with real numbers. What about the fourth property? Does it does it hold? x transpose w x if I take inner product of a vector with itself what is the meaning of positive definiteness? all the eigenvalues are greater than 0. There is no 0 eigenvalue, all the eigenvalues are greater than 0. Okay. The definition of positive definiteness itself means this is the definition of positive definiteness. Okay. A matrix is positive definite. The fundamental definition of positive definiteness is that if x transpose w x is always greater than 0 if x is not equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, it will be equal to 0. So, only vector, only vector that will give you x transpose w x equal to 0 is 0 vector. That is what we wanted, right. All four exams are satisfied. So, this is, this is another way of defining inner product on three dimensions. This kind of inner product we very, very routinely use in numerical methods because we need to do scaling of variables. X will consist of pressures, temperatures, concentrations, uh, all kinds of variables which have different units and then if you want to find out length of such a vector, you cannot just say x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square. You need to multiply it by a suitable weighting matrix. That is why you need this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that is why I said that W has to be positive definite and symmetric. Symmetric is important. X transpose WY will be symmetric. No? So, so, just positive definiteness is not enough. We need symmetry also. So, symmetric positive definite matrix is, is important. And then 
Lambda bar is complex conjugate, but but we are working right now with real numbers. So, complex conjugate will be the real number itself. There is no. Okay, so this 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 I can very easily change to my second example where R you talk with R n. I could have talked with R n, and the same thing would hold. Okay, I have a symmetric positive definite matrix. Okay, I have a symmetric positive definite matrix. And then I can define a norm, which is I can define an inner product, which is uh, using any symmetric positive definite matrix, which is n cross n, which will give me all the properties that I need for uh, defining inner product. Okay, we still haven't uh, established the connection between uh, the last axiom and the norm. I have been just I am just saying that well, it is related to the inner product, uh, inner product gives you a norm which is here, but actually uh, we need to see that connection, okay, we need to see that connection. So I will give one or two examples and move to proving that actually inner product in a general space defines a norm, just like in three dimensions x, trans, uh, x transpose x gives you a norm, okay, uh, you will also get a norm defined through inner product. Okay, before doing that, let me give you one or two more examples of inner product spaces. So, my second example would be Rn or I can easily move to Cn, a complex valued uh, n tuple and, and so on, um, where the matrix there should be Hermitian, not, uh, not symmetric positive, it should be Hermitian. Okay, uh, okay but moving on from finite dimensional spaces, let me give you a third example. So, set of square integrable functions. Over an interval a b, set of square integrable functions over an interval a b. Uh, you have come across this kind of a set when you worked with Fourier series expansions. Okay, now you will see, soon realize what are the connections. So, uh, if I am given any two functions, say f t and g t that belong to x, then I can define an inner product between f t and g t as integral a to b set of all square integrable functions okay so integral over a to b typically when you study fourier series in your undergraduate we look at a b that corresponds to 0 to 2 pi or we look at a b that correspond to minus pi to pi. You remember something like this? When you do Fourier series expansion, you take sin theta or sin t into f t dt, integral sin t f t dt, that is actually inner product. Okay, And you can just check whether all four axioms are satisfied. Let us look at first axiom. What is the first axiom? If I interchange f and g, will the integral be different? So, first axiom is satisfied. If I take, if I multiply f t by some lambda, what will happen to the integral? It will be lambda times, right? Second property is satisfied. What about distribution? If I take f plus g, in a product with some h t, very obvious, right? The third property, if I take f t plus g t in a product with h t, 
this will be uh, integral a to b f t plus g t which is same as integral a to b everyone with me on this everyone with me on this so the third third axiom is satisfied what about the fourth axiom if i take inner product of a function f with itself what will happen will it always be a positive number why so my fourth my fourth axiom is integral of ft with ft this is nothing but integral a to b ft square dt okay which is always greater than 0 okay if ft is not a zero function am i correct if ft has even one non zero value in interval a to b ft square will be positive ft square dt will be positive so ft as long as this will be zero this will be zero when f is zero everywhere on ab if f has non zero values this integral the summation of this integral will always be non zero okay so all the four properties that you need for an inner product space or inner product to be defined are satisfied okay uh, i could further modify this in the product see just like uh, from x transpose x from x transpose x i said x transpose w x where w is a symmetric positive definite matrix is also in a product i could expand this definition by putting a positive weighting function here so i can have another definition uh, my fourth example would be my fourth example would be uh, I'll take a weighting function wt ft gt dt. Okay, wt is strictly greater than zero on wt is strictly greater than zero is a positive function. wt is a positive function. It has only positive values in the interval a b this is my interval a b on which inner product is defined on which the space is defined okay just like we could use a positive definite symmetric matrix there if i uh, modify my definition of inner product by multiplying by a positive weighting function that also satisfies the inner product and these kind of weighting functions we are going to hit upon soon uh, in um, when we come up with different ways of defining inner product on set of continuous functions which are square integrable we will also come up with these kind of inner products you will need them when you solve partial differential equations so uh, boundary value problems when you when you solve in the uh, mathematical methods course okay so these there are different ways of defining inner products yet we have to establish two major connections one is with the angle and other is with the norm okay so let me start preparing for this i need to prove an inequality i need to prove an inequality which is essence which exactly captures this part in order to show that an inner product defines a norm, I need to prove an inequality called as Cauchy Schwarz inequality. And this inequality will help us to come up with a connection between inner product and the so called two norm. Okay? This is two norm, and we want uh, a connection to be established in a general.
okay so uh, so what all things that you need for a function to be a norm when do you call a function to be a norm what are the three axioms okay so if one is norm x is greater than 0 if x is not equal to 0 huh? and this is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 okay that is the first axiom okay what is my candidate norm definition my candidate norm definition is I want to use in the inner product space I want to define a norm actually we will call it two norm but right now uh, okay let us keep calling it two norm here. So two norm here is I want to say x x raised to half that is what I want to do x transpose x transpose x okay this is my candidate function. Now does this follow the first axiom for norm does it follow from the definition of the very definition it will follow nothing to worry okay. What is the second thing about norm? scalar multiplication. So, if I take alpha times x then that is equal to mod alpha norm x. What about this? Hmm? Does it follow? Okay, let me see alpha x alpha x what is this equal to? alpha alpha bar alpha x x right first element alpha bar second element alpha okay so which is mod alpha square x x right so alpha x alpha x raised to half is equal to mod alpha x x plus to half we have proved whatever we wanted so far so good okay now comes the third problem what is the third thing triangle inequality okay now triangle inequality is where we need this to be generalized okay you cannot go to triangle inequality unless you generalize this result in uh, inner product spaces. And here we need a little bit of work. Okay, I'm going to prove this on the board. Why why uh, this defines a inner product? Why this inner product defines uh, a norm? Uh, and uh, how you can generalize this result? This result uh, in the inner product space is called as Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So what is it that what is it that I want to do? I want to generalize this this particular this particular result from three dimensions. Okay, except here it is written x transpose y. I want to prove. I want to arrive at mod of x y is less than or equal to norm x. If I take inner product of any two vectors x y, its absolute value is less than okay this is what I want to show in any inner product space okay that is generalization of the result cos theta is always less than 1 okay and then with that I will move to triangle inequality because I have to establish triangle inequality to come up with okay so how do I do that now let us first look at a situation where y is equal to 0 vector. If y is equal to 0 vector does this hold always? Yeah, because inner product with 0 will give you 0, 0 is less than or equal to 0 no problem. Okay. Uh, 
So if y is equal to 0, so we do not want to look at a trivial case, 0 vector case, okay. Now to, to prove this inequality, now I am going to play a trick, okay. Uh, so let lambda be a scalar. Non zero scalar such that I am going to take a vector x minus lambda y and take inner product of x minus lambda y with itself. Everyone with me on this? Lambda is any arbitrary scalar, okay. So does this hold for any la non-zero lambda? This inequality holds for n. Why? In a product of a vector with itself is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So this always holds. Holds for any lambda not equal to zero, or any lambda for that matter. Why not equal to any any lambda? It is holds. Fine. It holds for any lambda. So what is this, what is this quantity on the left hand side, can you expand this? So this will be x inner product x, I am taking first with first, then, then x inner product lambda x y minus lambda bar y x, look carefully lambda times lambda and x distribution I am using the distribution property okay plus everyone with me on this I have just expanded the right hand side okay this also of course has to be greater than 0 this is x inner product x always greater than 0, mod lambda square y inner product y always greater than 0. Now I have two quantities in between, okay, x and y and y inner product x, okay. So let us preserve this part here because this is what we are generalizing. Uh, Okay, so this holds for any lambda, am I correct? That inequality which we proved there holds for any lambda. So I am going to pick one specific lambda now, okay. I am going to pick one specific lambda. Inner product is a scalar ratio of two scalars, okay, this is y is not 0, so y is not 0, so since y is not 0, this is a positive number, okay, and this lambda is a valid lambda, so this should hold for this lambda also, okay, for this particular lambda. What is lambda bar? Is that right? I just use the first property, okay. Now I am going to substitute this lambda and this lambda bar in the inequality that we that we developed earlier, okay. So, <coughs> so using this, using this lambda and lambda bar, I have 0 greater than x in a product x, okay. Before that, uh, let us, let us do a little bit of work. Uh, so this implies that minus lambda x in a product y minus lambda bar y in a product x, this is equal to 
if I just substitute this, if I just substitute this lambda and lambda bar, okay, then what I'll get is that this is nothing but two times x y y x just check what is lambda y x i am substituting in the first thing there x y right and what is lambda bar x y but there it comes y x right just just algebraic algebraic jugglery okay this is equal to 2 times well minus is here of course minus sign uh, minus sign will persist so this is equal to minus 2 times x in a product y x in a product y bar right y in a product y okay I will move on to here now. Uh, is everyone with me on that? Okay. So, uh, this is equal to minus 2 mod Okay, minus 2 mod. <coughs> now, so this quantity here, this quantity here, this quantity here can be now replaced by our new, new value. Okay, so I get, I get 0 greater than x minus 2 and our lambda is uh, if I substitute for lambda square where well, lambda square would be If I, if I substitute for lambda square, it would be this and then finally the inequality that I get is, I finally get an equality which is 0 greater than x, x minus Okay, so this minus this is always positive, and I'm just doing algebraic jugglery now. There is nothing uh, specific. If you if you are not followed right now, just go through meticulously through the through the notes. You will see the steps. Just substitutions. Okay, I have just eliminated the by. See, this is a scalar, so this square, uh, this square, this will cancel with this square, and then you can you can do the jugglery. It's not so difficult. Okay, so what does this imply? This implies that the above thing implies that mod of x y is less than or equal to x x raised to half y y raised to half. This is I take this on the left hand side and take the square root. See this is this is square of this in the product of x and y right i take this i take this quantity on left hand side 
because see this is this is greater than this right otherwise this cannot be greater than 0 right and then I am just doing multiplication y y I have bought it on this side I have just omitted one in between step everyone clear about this no problems okay so now so what is this what is this 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 inequality is same as this results in three dimensions which we know no difference you know x dot product y mod of that is always less than this which is nothing but cos theta less than 1 okay so so uh, I have proved an inequality which is called as cauchy schwarz inequality uh, proved inequality called cauchy schwarz inequality and this helps us to prove the triangle inequality how will you prove triangle inequality now what is triangle inequality so triangle inequality should be norm so we want to prove we want to prove x plus y 2 or x plus y is less than or equal to norm x plus norm y we want to prove this inequality finally and i want to use this I want to use this result. This is this is Cauchy Schwarz inequality. This is generalization of this result. Okay. Uh, well, once I once I declare uh, x transpose x to be norm of x, I can actually even move to this inequality because this is a scalar. I can divide, uh, take it inside, and so on. We'll move to that little later. In the next class will will start from this inequality, Cauchy Schwarz inequality, and move on to proving triangle inequality once we prove triangle inequality we are done okay once we prove triangle inequality we have shown that inner product defines a norm three axioms of norm two of them we already proved the third one was triangle inequality to prove triangle inequality we need cauchy schwarz inequality but cauchy schwarz inequality not only helps you to prove triangle inequality it also gives you a way of generalizing definition of angle Okay, it will also give you a way of generalizing So you will be able to define orthogonal vectors in any inner product space. These vectors could be two functions like sin and cos. Okay, or these vectors could be two polynomials. We will talk about orthogonal polynomials. Why do we talk about orthogonal polynomials? Why do we talk about orthogonal functions? They are very very useful when you do mathematics, applied mathematics. But why were they called orthogonal? Why were they called orthonormal or whatever? Okay, so that those questions will get answered if you understand this basis. That's why I'm doing all this these proofs. Okay, so let's uh, in the next class we'll move on to triangle inequality and then more properties of uh, inner product spaces. We'll see that the famous Pythagoras theorem, which you study in your eighth grade, also holds in any of these inner product spaces. What a relief! You can work with orthogonal vectors. Okay.